morning, Biola. Um, my name is Sam LeBlanc, and this is my co-director, Kipper Wagner. We are the Directors of Missions Conference this year. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to Biola Missions Conference Chapel. Um, we're really excited to be up here. One of the unique opportunities of being uh, the Director of Missions Conference is getting to share our theme that we've been working on with you guys. We've been putting it together for about a year now, um, and just it's really exciting having Missions Conference here. Um, if you want to follow along with us, we're going to be reading through John 1, 1 through 18. The words will be up on the screen here. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning all th with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he was before me. And from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. In the darkness, fear creeps in. Anxiety haunts and deceit thrives. In the darkness, we long for light. We are desperate for guidance. In the beginning of the world, darkness covered the face of the earth. Out of the darkness, God declared there to be light, and it was good. Light was necessary for making God's creative works visible and life possible. Because of the fall, our lives are immersed in the darkness. We are sinners who hide ourselves from the glory of God. In the same way as at creation, God declared it good for there to be light. He shines in us to illuminate our darkness, bringing shape and purpose and healing to the areas that were once hidden. Having been illuminated by the light of Christ, we are now luminous. We are full of light shining, especially in the darkness. We are called to be his light in this dark world. We are not the light ourselves, but witnesses that testify of the light. This task is not easy, but it is simple. We face burdens, obstacles, and struggles in our journey. Though we are full of his light, we face darkness daily. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Through our brokenness, the light shines through the cracks. And now we can't help but shine. But why is this? Why is the light so desirable? Despite all of the darkness, the light has come. Despite all of our brokenness, we still encounter the love of God. Once we have experienced the love of God, we shouldn't be able to keep it inside. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. Once we are filled with the light, we do not hide ourselves from the world, but set ourselves in a hill for those around us to witness the glory of the Lord through us. We love others because God first loved us. Christ is our everlasting light. This light carries hope. This light never fades. And now being filled with the light, we are luminous. We will shine in the darkness and never be overcome. So this year's theme for Missions Conference is luminous. The darkness has not overcome. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> yeah! yeah. Um, so that's kind of more of like the formal presentation that Sam and I um, really want to share with you guys. But now we're kind of just going to dive into about the heart and um, the passion and the reason behind um, this year's theme. Um, so obviously the, the element that we're working with here is light. And um, it kind of has two components to it that Sam and I are going to address. Um, it has an internal aspect to it as well as an external aspect. So I'm going to be talking about the internal aspect and then Sam is going to follow me and talk about the external aspect. Um, but going into the internal um, we're talking about how God is love and how God's light is love. Um, so the, and just like that passage in John that talks about in him was life and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. So I'm going to take that verse and put an internal aspect to it. 
Because in order for us, in, in order for God to shine through us, he has to shine in us. So to start, I'm going to talk about how God is love. Because God is love. That's what he is. That is his nature. And sometimes I often struggle with, um, with this image of God being love because I hear that and then I kind of resort back to ways I feel like I've seen God in scripture. Because sometimes I feel like I've seen him as cruel. Sometimes I feel like I see him as someone who blesses some but curses others. Sometimes I kind of view him as a grandfather figure or a harsh judge. And sometimes I feel like when I pray, I, I feel like a dog with a tail between its legs, feeling guilty and shameful for the sins that I've committed. Um, and that view and, and that kind of twist on, on our view of God happens when we focus on the world around us and when the world around us gets chaotic um, and when things get difficult. Because when we focus on the world, we start to question, is, is God truly loving? Like, if God is loving, then he should blank. And we play out all these scenarios in our head of, if God is loving, then he would heal this person. If God is loving, then he would change this person who's making my life difficult. Or if God is loving, then he'll let my roommate wake up to the first alarm and not the 20th alarm. Or we'll talk about, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's the worst thing. Um, or we'll talk about, we kind of play the scenario of, well, if God is loving, then he'll make the hard decision for us. Um, but we, we're actually putting the wrong emphasis on the situations because God is love. That is what he is. But the most loving thing that God can do for us is to mold us and shape us into characters who, whose nature is love. I'll say that again. The most loving thing that God can do is mold us into people whose character is love. And in the end, my words will always fail to describe the vast scope and the intimate presence that God's love is. So now kind of going into the next step about what God's love is. Um, God's love is light. And, and we see that in scripture. Um, and that's the, the big element that we want to push for missions conference this year is that God's love is light. Now if you open a dictionary and look at the definition of light, uh, the, the definition of light is the natural agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible. So light is something that stimulates sight and makes things visible. And if you flip a couple pages to the left and look at the definition of darkness, the literal definition of darkness is just the absence of light. Darkness is the absence of light. And so it's kind of funny because darkness is not even its own thing. Darkness doesn't even have its own source. It can't exist on its own. Darkness isn't even its own substance. It's the lack of light. So imagine with you, me, if you will, that this stage is my heart. And standing right here, there's a lamp. And this lamp is shining. And in this analogy, this lamp represents God's love in my life and the light that it is in, in my heart. So if there's a lamp here and I'm standing here, then what's behind me? A shadow. So there's going to be a shadow behind me. <clears throat> and sometimes when we're facing uh, in, in season of doubt or season of trial or when things are hard, we, we begin to question, well, is God really love? Is God, is God loving? And we kind of question the character of God. And we often, you know, simulate it as, well, the light's diminishing inside of our hearts. And, and that's the, we're like, ah, well, God's love just isn't shining as bright as it could be or, or something like that. But um, sometimes what actually happens is in those dark seasons of when we're falling back into sin over and over again, it's not that the light's fading, but we're, we're feeling like we we're too shameful to approach the light. So we end up turning our back. And when we turn our back from the source of light, we're turning into our shadow and turning into our darkness. And in the darkness is where um, you can hide all those insecurities that you feel and all those sins that you fall back into. Because if I'm standing here looking at my shadow, I'm like, ah, okay, yeah, well, this is just a sin that I'll always struggle with, so I'll just keep this here. Or, yeah, I always wondered, like, the real, I always struggle with like God's sovereignty, but I'm just going to keep it here and just keep hiding it. And this is what Satan wants you to do. Satan wants you to believe that there's comfort in this darkness and that this is, this is where you're supposed to be. But um, what, <laughs> the, the reality is that God's light is designed to pierce through into that darkness uh, he shines in us to illuminate our dark areas, bringing shape, purpose, and healing to the areas of our lives that were once hidden. So healing is experienced and felt when we bring our darkness to the light. 
Healing is experienced and felt when we bring our sins and, and trials to the love of God. And that's what repentance is. And that's where we are given the testimony of God's love in our lives. When we bring out of the darkness um, the sins and struggles that we have and the way that God's love gets to interact with that. Because in the end, Satan hates the fact that he doesn't have any power against light. If there's two rooms and a door between the two, one of them's dark, one of them's light, and you open the door, the darkness isn't going to creep into the light room. Ten times out of ten, that light room is going to creep into the dark, the dark room. And that's Satan in every battle, is, is fully aware and, and fully uh, afraid of the fact that he has no strength or no power against this light. So as we are coming up in the conference, um, Sam and I just really want you guys to uh, take some time to figure out where the darkness is hiding in your heart. Um, and just an element that we wanted to bring into this year's conference is the fact that it's not always rainbows and butterflies with our walk with Jesus Christ. And sometimes we feel like um, that, can, that can be the vibe of missions conferences, kind of looking over the individual believer, but just, no, just go, just go, just get yourself out there. Um, but so we wanted to, with this theme, kind of have these two aspects to it of internal and external. So as we're two days out, um, guys, I just would encourage you to think about those dark areas that are in your heart and think about the ways that um, you're standing or the, the things that are hiding in your shadow and the fears that you have of bringing those into light. But just the beauty of th that's what the design of God's love is. God's love is designed to be the light in our heart. And uh, because we can't, God, God can't shine through us unless he shines in us. So I encourage you guys to figure out more ways to have God um, be able to shine into your hearts and experience the love of God and the internal aspect of, of God's love in our lives. And so, <laughs> so a little bit behind our, our passage for uh, this conference, John 1 really is John's prologue into the rest of his gospel. And what, what he's trying to get across here is the main point of the gospel, which is Christ. And we, we really share this uh, verse with you guys for the sake of that's what me and Kip want to do too. We, we want to, right now we're standing on this stage to point you guys to the main point of this conference. It's not about the band, it's not about what the speakers say, how, how well they say it, but it's about Christ being glorified through, through this conference. And so, a little bit of a definition of uh, the word luminous, and uh, a lot of the reason of why we actually picked this word is the definition is full of or shedding light, bright or shining, especially in the darkness. And so like Kip said, we are full of this light from Christ, this love, this light, and, and he is now in us. And so therefore, we shine, especially into the darkness. And so I want to share with you guys a little bit of a story of, um, I have somebody close to me that shared this. He visited uh, the Grand Canyon. He took a trip there. And uh, this guy, he, he's not a believer, but he came back to me and shared this story of, Sam, when I got to the edge of the Grand Canyon and just looked out and viewed over into um, the canyon and saw just creation, he said he couldn't, help but re um, he couldn't help but recognize that there was something greater at work. And let, let me remind you, this is an unbeliever saying this. Coming, coming to the edge of creation, the beauty of God and saying, there's something there. I don't know what it is, but there's something because the Grand Canyon was so artfully crafted, formed, shaped, that there was no, there was no way that he couldn't help but say that. There's no way that he could just say, this, this is just a coincidence, that that's the way it is. And so I tell this story because I, I think this is a lot of, I think it's really similar to us. I think in the same way, um, we, we kind of are like that Grand Canyon because my team and I, um, our team, um, took a trip to the Grand Canyon earlier in the year uh, for our retreat. And that, that's when I really understood the meaning behind those words that uh, he said to me of, of there's just something greater there. Because when, when, I, when I stood there, it was just so evident and so undeniable that there was an artist behind the artwork. And so, like I said, I think that's the same for us. I think that's how we should be living our lives because it's the idea of when we are living our lives in light and love of the gospel and have been transformed by the love of Christ that others can't help but see us, how we act, how we live, and recognize that we've been artfully and just without a flaw crafted in the image of God. 
Just as when you stand at the edge of the Grand Canyon, there's something greater there. When we live in light of the gospel and in light of the love that Christ shined into us, people see that. And they say, man, there's, there's something there. And so um, that brings me to like when, when sharing the gospel. Well, I just want you guys to think of what, what are your first feelings when you, sh- when you think of sharing the gospel? Like what, to take a second and just think, like when, when I bring that up, is it, is it feelings of anxiety? Is it, is it that you're scared, nervous, maybe fearful? Is it a sense of obligation? Is it duty that I have to do this, that, that I haven't done this enough? Or, or maybe, it, maybe it is excitement. Maybe you guys just thrive at that, and that's fantastic. But regardless, I think that this idea of sharing the gospel and evangelizing has become this kind of scary, far-fetched task that maybe like only the evangelist does, and, and you're, you're gifted in an area, in a different area. But I, I just, I, I, don't, I don't think that's true, and um, I just want to figure out like what makes this so terrifying for us? What makes it so hard to shine our light into the darkness? And I think it's sometimes it's, to be honest, belief that we don't, we think that we don't know the gospel well enough ourselves. I think that sometimes when I, when I share this, we think, oh, like, I, I don't know the gospel. I'll, I'll get bested in an argument. Somebody will have a better point. I just don't know. I don't know how to share. And honestly, think, think if that's true for you. Because that, that was true for me for the longest time of just, I, I don't know enough. Like, what do I have to bring? But I, I just wanted to press into that for a little bit and just let me tell you with confidence with full confidence that the way that the Spirit has radically worked in each of our lives, each of your lives, everyone sitting in this room, is a powerful statement of light overcoming darkness. Your guys' life is a powerful statement. Your personal story or testimony is you declaring the power of Christ over the helplessness of sin because his light shined into you. And then some some of you will come to me and be like, Sam, you, you don't know my story. Like, you, you just don't know how, how, much, how much is going wrong. Like, you, I'm just unworthy. And I think, guys, that, that's just a lie. Because at the cross, Christ has already declared victory over any sin and has, without regretting it ever, without one second, even when two nails pierced in his hands, he declared you worthy and did it because he loves you. So any, any, any feeling of unworthiness, any regret, any, any shame that you're holding, he, he already declared victory over it. And he says, for, forget about that. Look at my light. Look, how, look at me. And, and that's what you're sharing. And so if, if it's pride that's holding you back, if it's your pride of just, uh, like, I'm, I'm not going to be the best, Christ has already declared victory over that. If, if it's your sexual history or your past, Christ has already declared victory over that. Because of the sacrifice that Christ made when he was nailed up on a cross for whatever sin it may be, you are worthy, loved, righteous, free, and now luminous. Full of, full of or shedding light. The light of Christ, especially into the darkness. So whatever you have in your past, that is a testament of light overcoming darkness. Because in the end, guys, there's victory. Christ has won when he was up on the cross. So... Something about that light too, guys. Another, another little bit of a story from the Grand Canyon. We, were, we went to, to the Grand Canyon at night again to look at the view. We were curious. We were fascinated. One for the, how dark it was all around us, only the light of moon, the stars. But for the other sake of looking all the way down at the canyon, you just see, see little lights all the way at the bottom. And it was the campfire from campers. Um, and it was just so fascinating to us that we were all the way at the top of the canyon, and, and that's what you saw. Um, and I think, like, the fires emitting this light was blatantly visible to us. I think it was something of, you can see a flicker of a candle from 30 miles away. That's the power of the light. If it's there, you see it. And in the same way, the light that is shown into your life, people see that. It is so evident the way that you're living your lives, the way that you are free from any shame, just any anxiety, fear, the way that you're living, that, that's the light. It's the same thing of looking down at the canyon and seeing that bright light and can't help but be like, wow, look at that. And so 
I just want to encourage you guys, your story, how you grew up, what you struggle with, what you may not or may have overcome, that is the gospel. Your story is a testament to the power of Christ declaring victory in darkness. Your story, your life, you, each one of you is a living, moving, breathing testament of the power of the gospel, shining light in the darkness, and the darkness has not and will never overcome it. So guys, let's, let's share that. That's why we're going. That's what this conference is about. It's not about you guys overcoming this stuff on your own. This conference isn't about us fixing ourselves at each session, but like I said, this conference is about Christ. Because when you turn your eyes from the darkness and turn it towards Christ, we find life. And guys, like it was mentioned in in worship earlier, this world is dark. This world needs Christ. And it just needs freedom. And it is just, hearing the news, it is sad every day hearing what's going on. But guys, we have hope. We have light and we have light that has radically formed us and shaped us. So that, that, that's really what this conference is about, guys. That's what me and Kip have been just working for a year trying to get together. And that's what, that's what we want you to come into conference thinking. What's my story? What do I have to share? If you're thinking, I don't know how to share the gospel, that, that's like saying you guys don't know your own story. Because your guys' story is the gospel. So yeah, Kip's going to pray for us yeah. and then, Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, we just, we just want it to be uh, known to you guys that this, this conference this year is um, something that we're very excited about, obviously, um, something we've been working a, a, ton, a ton towards. And um, as you just think about the theme and, and look at the scriptures and um, the, this year's like, you know, passages and stuff, uh, just be aware of the fact that, that there's an internal and an external aspect to this light. And um, both are important. And so whether you're going into this conference thinking, you know, God, I, I just need your love to shine in me, then that's exactly what we want. And that's exactly what we want you guys to be prepared for this year. Or whether you're like, all right, God, I want you to shine through me. Biola University prepares Christians to think biblically about everything from science to business to education and the arts. Learn more at biola.edu.